yeah so this is the first thing you're going to be seeing uh, this one I'm just going to go through briefly the user interface and some of the common uh, like keystrokes that will help you speed up your workflow right let me turn on the screencast so you can actually see my my keystroke over here let me also turn off this and check yep uh, so <laughs> Uh, user interface look quite intimidating at first but uh, it's actually very simple here like in the viewport this is called the viewport and this is where you're going to be seeing your camera your uh, design and the lighting that you're going to be having in your scene uh, on the right here are the the tools but uh, honestly i don't use these very often because i think using shortcut is actually very important in blender especially when when you want to speed up your workflow so uh, let's go through some of the very fast shortcut right uh, so to orbit around the object you would uh, press on the middle key uh, the scroll wheel on your mouse and then start like like uh, panning around uh, yeah to orbit around the object uh, to pan around the object you hold shift and drag with your uh, scroll wheel as well to pan around like that so you can navigate around your viewport as such um, yeah, so up here you can see all the menu button, it's you know, very typical. And here, a bit to the right, you can see all the different workflow uh, spaces. Uh, for the purpose of rendering, I think we should only look at, I mean, like, for now, we, we only need to look at the layout, which is what you're seeing right now. Uh, the shading tab, where you're going to be doing your material, setting up all these materials should be done here. It's more convenient because you have access to all these nice notes which we're going to be covering a bit later and subsequently the last thing is compositing right where you have the render rendered already and you want a thing to look you know extra nice right um so uh, in layout up here you can see all these small buttons over here just this is just the gizmo like let you pan around like this if you don't want to use like a mouse i guess um some of the some of the overlay so like you know the, your floor your grid and everything to make sure that everything is aligned and nice um these four buttons over here are like the sort of different um viewport shading modes uh so what you're seeing right now is a shaded mode like this one uh, you can also have access to the wireframe mode um the material preview where you can like just preview your material in real time without having to wait for the render to come out and uh, this is the uh, the rendered mode so you can preview your render like here uh, right now it doesn't really look very nice because we really <laughs> we haven't set up the scene yet but yeah uh, so right now um, we're gonna go back to shaded mode over here you uh, press n you have access to uh, the viewport properties so to, so to speak so like say for example you click on this cube and you can see that it's uh its location xyz its rotation and its scaling and its dimension over here uh yeah uh in view uh on this panel uh, you also have access to the viewport camera not this camera but the viewport camera uh usually here i tend to change the focal length to a, a higher value so you know, it looks more like the real rendering camera um, also if your design is very small and you need to zoom in a lot without like clipping you should make this value and this this value here clip start a bit smaller just add a zero and you should be fine yep yeah and again to access this menu over here on the right so uh, these are the collection and you know all your objects and all your assets are gonna be in in this and you can organize them and you know it's easier to see the camera your design light right now right so these are sort of the layers um, down here you actually have all the different uh, I guess settings right so here you have the render properties we're gonna go through this a bit uh, in the subsequent segment where we set up the the rendering scene uh, we have the export where you can set your uh, aspect ratio and your resolution you can also set the the frame duration of your animation if you're going to be animating the frame rate as well and where you're going to be putting your render file is going to also be here in the export settings and what kind of file or like the compression and everything it's going to be here uh, in the these are the like the lend, the render passes. So if you use Keyshot before, you know about the clown pass and the miss pass and all that. It's gonna be here similarly. 
um yeah nothing here for now um we're gonna go through this subsequently i guess um nothing here this is like the sort of the world setting so like your your world texture your hdri or you're gonna have some in your scene it's gonna be over here um yeah nothing here that is too important um again nothing here that is too important at, at least not applicable for now object properties actually is going to be important when you animate subsequently so we're going to talk about this a bit later um this is good. this is like the physics so if you have particle systems and you have cloth simulation it's going to be in here uh constraint is actually important in the event that you need to uh animate something you're gonna have to add quite a bit of constraints to the stuff that you move around in the scene so we're gonna be talking about this later this is the material property so instead of going to shading over here you can actually directly change the material like in uh in this little menu over here but usually i go into shading shading to have access to more and uh, you know controls uh texture properties um not really applicable for now so yeah so this is oh yeah forgot about the timeline down here um yeah very very important if you're animating uh, i mean we are animating so it's quite important uh keep track keep track of the timeline you click on this button you actually have uh access to all the different kind of like workflow windows or workflow spaces essentially it's the same as uh these up here you can like say have access to the shader editor which is like the shading that you see just now but you can have access to this here so it's more convenient in that sense and you can actually also like open like if you drag oh i think i should let me show you that again right so you drag your cursor up here you see like a little plus sign you can actually drag oh my god you can drag it across and open like a new uh, viewport or window and here you can again change what workspace you think is suitable for your workflow as of as of the the process of rendering yeah uh, so yeah that is that is interface and some basic ui uh right one thing i want to show shortcuts i think i haven't shown the shortcuts i can't remember but i don't think i did right so now you know how to orbit around the object you know to pan around the object uh to move the object around actually you can actually just use one of these tools or the faster way of doing it is to select the object and press g and then you can move it all the way around and uh you can also lock it to a certain direction say x you press x to lock it to the x uh axis press y to lock it to the y axis or z to lock it to the z axis for some reason it's not showing down in the screencast but yeah um similarly if you press s it's gonna scale the object and you can lock the lock lock the scaling to the x direction y or z direction uh say if you press shift z it's gonna it's gonna just expand your object in the x and y plane and keep the z the same yeah so that is shift z or shift x or shift y to keep each direction the same it's quite confusing but uh, yeah it's gonna take some time to get used to i guess um r to rotate and you can lock the rotation to the x the y or the z axis yep all right so i guess that's everything about ui uh next we're gonna move on to how i set up all the little like properties here uh, and then we can start rendering already right right so rendering first we need to import our design um uh, usually i just delete everything here because you really don't need anything here a to select everything x to delete and you delete everything yep just like that yeah uh, it's good to organize your layers or your collection so here we're just gonna call this pen design right i need a war okay so now we're gonna import uh so in file you click on import wave front and locate the file that you saved uh yeah this one pen design uh select the obj 
here in transform uh, forward you're gonna select y forward and the z is gonna be up like by default when you select y forward uh, in geometry you would have to change instead of split by object split by group and that's it mm, it's gonna take a moment uh, as you can see that your pen, the pen is important but it's it's very big it's actually very big um, so the first thing that I always do is to S for scaling if you remember and then uh, you're gonna key in the value of 0 0.001 essentially you're changing from meter scale to millimeter because you cut it in millimeter so now you can see the pen over there is uh, yeah it's to scale you can actually check it uh, by pressing uh, by just selecting like say a part that you know the dimension of and press N and go to item over here and you can check the scale to see that it's correct it's important for the design to have proper scale like the the actual scale in order to for, for the render to look most realistic yep. uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, you can actually access the orthographic view which is very helpful by uh, typing 1 uh, on the number pad all right let me relocate the design uh, one to go to the front view three to go to the side view oh my god <laughs> yeah three to, to the side view and seven to the top view or you can actually just click here to go to the different orthographic view but i find it faster to just like click like this one three and seven yeah uh huh uh, first, for those of you who do not have a number pad, you can actually go into edit here, preference, and in input, you can actually just click on emulate number pad and you can use the numbers on your keyboard. So that's nice. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna go through every setting here. Um, usually I'll just like keep a file where to like with all these settings saved so I don't have to like set this up again, but this demonstration. Um, first thing you do is go to this render properties menu in render engine you're going to change to cycles essentially cycles is like a real I mean not real time it's like a ray tracing render engine it's going to make things look a bit more realistic I think it's similar to Keyshot um, EV if you get like really capable with EV it's actually also going to look very good and it's going to render in real time which is which means it's even faster but um, for the most Realistic result that is also easy to get, we're gonna go to with cycles. Um, device, if you have a GPU, you're gonna click on GPU compute. If you don't have a GPU, it's fine. Uh, but in case you have a GPU, you also need to go uh, into the preference under edit and turn on your uh, GPU. Uh, you can use CUDA optics uh, depend on, depending on like the hardware that you have. Um, this one you should check uh, yeah, because uh, it's just different systems uh, render better with CUDA optics. Right. Uh, in sampling, uh, this essentially means that uh, well, the higher the value, the the more the less noisy the the render is going to be, but the longer it's going to take. Right. So, uh, in render, um, usually if I have like a very simple studio like lighting kind of background, no context, scene, nothing, three hundred. Um, works and um, because I have a GPU as well usually I set this value to like a hundred so the viewport is gonna render at a hundred sample and the render is gonna render at 300 samples uh, this is actually not very high because uh, the next thing that I do is actually uh, in the layer pass later yeah I'm gonna talk about that later um, because we're gonna be animating so it's good to also turn on motion blur and in color management uh, actually, I'll demonstrate this later, right? Yeah, in the export settings, uh, our animation is gonna be thirty frames per second. So over here, I change to thirty frames per second. The output, yeah, uh, maybe you can also change the output to this folder, to the folder where you're gonna be putting the the renders to. Uh, compression to zero percent, right? Um, right. So because I set the render, uh. Uh, sample size to 300 is actually is gonna be quite noisy depending on whether you have like complex materials inside your render so uh, 300 is actually not very high if you have time you can crank it up until you see no noise in your render but because 
design students who don't have time. You have to render very fast. Uh, denoising data is your friend, I guess. Um, so if you check this, essentially what it's gonna do later, I'm gonna I'm gonna elaborate more. But essentially, it's gonna just like use like some AI thing to take the noise away from the render subsequently, even if you have like a very low render uh, sample size. So that is very nice. So just check this box and we're gonna talk about it later, denoising data. Um, in a world, this one, this value, I changed to zero. Essentially, it's gonna take away all ambient light from uh, the scene. So all the lights that we're gonna be putting in our scene uh, is gonna be the only light that contribute to the lighting of the of, of the object, right? Nothing here, nothing here. I don't think modifier nothing as of yet. Uh, actually, nothing here as of yet. So these constraints we're gonna add later, right? And material and oh yeah, I think I think that's about it with uh, like setting up the the render scene. Right, so that is like the, I guess the the end of the next segment. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so now I think we're gonna move on to putting some texture and material here. We're gonna put also like a, a simple light, and we're gonna put a camera to see what it looks like um, with material and everything. So that's gonna be the next segment.